During the First World War, Croatia was part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and that empire got embroiled in the war to end all wars in 1914. But what has actually happened to Croatia during this conflict? Well, that's what you're gonna find out today because in this video, we're gonna talk about another country in World War I, Croatia. Hey, good to have you back on the channel. If you're new, I'm Stefan, I'm a Dutch history teacher. Like to cover history on location. I'm now in Zagreb. If you find it interesting, well, consider subscribing and also hit that notification bell. The Croat people in the Habsburg monarchy in 1910 numbered 2.8 million people, 5.3% of the total population. The historical awareness of the modern Croat nation derives from the medieval Trian kingdom of Croatia, Slavonia, and Dalmatia. Thanks to the existence of this proto-national state, the Croat in contrast to most other language groups in the region were able to look back on traditions of statehood. Croatia had close ties with the Habsburg Empire. After the Austro-Hungarian Compromise of 1867, the Croatian lands came under Hungarian jurisdiction. What is now Croatia was divided into several areas. There was the Kingdom of Croatia Slavonia and the Kingdom of Dalmatia. And today's Croatia has a part of what was then known as Austrian littoral. But that area was given to Italy after World War I. Before World War I broke out, there were ideas of making a tripartite empire, making a Croatian state equal in status to Austria and Hungary. Actually, Archduke Franz Ferdinand supported this. He was assassinated in the Bosnian city of Sarajevo, and this gave an impulse to anti-Serbianism. The assassination of the Archduke was the direct cause of the outbreak of the First World War. War on Serbia was declared on the 28th of July. Croat politician Stjepan Radic was negative about this. The only chance for Croatians lies in the total defeat of Austria-Hungary, without, however, causing its dissolution. In case of victory, Hungarians would be strengthened and in case of defeat, the breakup of the Croatian lands might be partitioned by Italy and Serbia. Croatian position was powerless. Lying on the southern edge of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, its territory inevitably became a subject of the potential trade-offs of the great powers in their attempts to bribe medium-sized neutrals like Bulgaria and Italy into entering the war on their side. During the war, there was little to no action on Croatian soil, but the Croats did fight elsewhere. The Croatian army was basically part of the Hungarian army and there were Croatian units such as the Croatian Home Guard where the Croats were trained in Croatia, the language of command was Croatian and officers up to generals were of Croatian descent. In the summer of 1914 the 13th Croatian Slavonian Corps and the 16th Dalmatian as a government corps fought in Serbia. The next year the 13th left for Galicia and the 16th for the Italian front. The 13th came to join them in 1918 and there were Croatians on the Western Front and artillery units in Sinai and Palestine. They served in the Royal and Imperial Air Services. Emil Utselak was a noteworthy Croatian airman who developed training programs for pilots. Croatians also served in the Navy and by 1915 over one-third of the Austro-Hungarian Navy personnel was Croatian. Croats also led the Katara Mutiny of 1918. And then there were also the Green Cadres, which were bands of Croatian men that roamed the Croatian countryside, uh, robbed wealthy people set their house ablaze basically the idea of stealing from the rich giving it to the poor some were just outright bandits others were anti-Habsburg monarchy anti-war deserters pro-communist social revolutionaries you name it Croatian men fought on different fronts of the first world war and it is believed that 137,000 of them not survived the First World War. The war caused severe food shortages in the Austro-Hungarian Empire and by the end of 1918 the Allies were fighting a disintegrating army. Now let's discuss the political side. Croatians had reason to believe their fear would become reality as the secret treaty of London promised Italy, lands of Gorizia, Slovenia, Istria and the northern half of Dalmatia in return for declaring war on the central powers. Serbia was offered Bosnia, a stretch of Dalmatia's southern coastline and portion of Eastern Slavonia. 
Meanwhile, a Yugoslav committee was formed at the end of 1914, formally in April 1915. Members of this committee visited Russia, Britain and the US to lobby for their cause. In the spring of 1918, Croatian political parties issued the Zagreb Resolution that advocated for a state of Croat, Slovenes and Serbs. Towards the end of the war, nationalist uprisings occurred throughout the Austro-Hungarian Empire. Emperor Karl issued the Imperial Manifesto on the 16th of October 1918 which advocated for a federalist structure and granting white autonomy to its peoples. On the 25th of October 1918, in Agram, Zagreb, the Croatian parliament declared Croatia and Dalmatia part of a sovereign state of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs. But this state was not going to last because there were people with other ideas. See, proclaiming a South Slav or a Yugoslav state, well, they dated back from the 19th century. In 1914, the Serbian Niche Declaration made the establishment of such a state one of Serbia's war goals. And then there was the Corfu Declaration in 1917, in which Nikola Pasic and Ante Trumbic, who was from the Yugoslav Committee, an agreement that made the creation of a Kingdom of Yugoslavia possible. The National Council of Slovenes, Croats and Serbs too agreed to a unification with Serbia, although its final organization was not made clear yet. Some Croats, such as Stjepan Radic, politician and founder of the Croatian People's Peasant Party, the HPSS, were happy when the the South Slav state was proclaimed, but others such as Anta Pavlic, future leader of Croatia in World War II, were not happy at all, as he stated. The 1st of September 1918, the day Prince Regent Alexander officially proclaimed the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes was a sad and blurry day. People passed by the streets with nausea, without expression and with a bitter taste in their mouths. That day Croatia was put to the grave by the policy of Greater Serbia and there was a deep conviction that she would never exist again. Now Pavlic would become the leader of Croatia during World War II. The independent state of Croatia as it was called. If you want to learn more on that click here and if you want to learn what happened to Montenegro during World War I click here. Thank you for watching. See you later.